thanks for sticking with us at the end of the day. Uh, I'm going to show you some cute kitties now and some cute birds. Win-win. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a project that um, I was involved in a few years ago now called Birds in Schools. Um, I'm going to mainly focus on the Sydney version that we ran, um, but we're about to expand that um, and so I'm going to introduce you to the bigger project and hopefully you guys have some ideas for us on it as well. Hopefully we're going to hear from them. This is where we had some problems earlier. Public school. What is the favourite bird you've seen in our school grounds and why? My favourite bird is the rainbow lorikeet because it is pretty and very beautiful to look at. My favourite bird is the cockatoo because it is very funny and playful and white is one of my favourite colours. My, my favourite bird is the cockatoo because it's always having fun. My favourite bird is called the raven because it's just a My favorite bird is a rainbow lorikeet because it's so colorful. My favorite bird is the cockatoo because it screams almost as loud as a human. Oh, the eastern rosella. They just make the beautiful noises. <laughs> so these are who the kids we were working with. Um, a series of uh, year five and six students in Sydney in a whole range of different schools, um, public and private, um, inner Sydney, right through to quite rural areas. So the bird life that they're seeing was quite diverse, uh, but they were seeing beautiful birds. And even if you are in the inner city, you can see these guys, some weird guys, some that are literally right on your doorstep. If you open the door, they may come in. Um, and there are this whole suite of little birds that have really been the impetus for the Birds in Backyards program, which are still around in urban areas but are much less common than they used to be. Uh, like my little favourites, the superb fairy wrens. So Birds in Backyards is all about addressing this decline. Birds in Schools is all about getting these students to identify birds, look at what they've got and help create habitat to bring some of these birds back. We're not always dealing with the positives. Sometimes there are some birds in school grounds that need a bit of consideration as well, uh, like the poor bin chicken. Uh, so the Birds in Schools project, as I said, is all around um, addressing declines in bird diversity in urban areas. I guess bringing the balance back to our bird life. We want schools to create habitat on their school grounds. There is a lot of space on many schools and there's the opportunity to put in vegetation. And we, not only, we don't only want to put habitat in, we want to be educating the students, we want to be increasing their knowledge, in, knowledge and we want them to change their behaviours. And not only their behaviours, but the behaviours of the general community, them going home, telling their parents and getting involved that way as well. So the pilot project, as I said, was run um, a few years ago now. It was an environmental trust grant, so we had a project officer in the role. Uh, and we worked with 16 schools throughout the Sydney region. Uh, we had some excursions at our little education centre at the Bird Life and Discovery Space at Sydney Olympic Park. Uh, and the GWS Giants even came on board and helped out with uh, a little bit of funding to get schools to excursions and things that can be a bit costly. So bird monitoring is really at the core of the birds in schools project. What we're trying to get the students to do is to monitor the birds on their school grounds and to understand that monitoring in the context of their whole school environment. So they're learning about their school as an ecosystem. They're learning about the value that, that the, the bird life can have on their school grounds and what they can do to make a positive change to help birds. The students at the end of the project developed an action plan saying what they were going to do to make their school better for birds. We were able to build some of those action plans and it also feeds into the school's environmental management plan. So it's a bit of a win on that level as well. Don't worry too much about the detail in those pretty colours. I'm going to take you step by step through the modules and what was involved. Uh, but basically there were five modules in total. The first one was aimed at the teachers. It's basically the teaching notes the little Bible that they need to be involved in the project. And then there were four student-specific uh, modules. The teachers delivered the first and the third part of each of those modules. And we came in in the middle as the experts. 
with a team of 11 volunteers who were trained to come out and help conduct a lot of these projects. We did do some evaluations, not of the students though, uh, of the teachers that were involved throughout the project. So as I said, the teacher PD was the first part. We brought them all out to the Discovery Centre, um, got them to do a bit of cognitive mapping. So we basically gave them all a sheet of paper and said, what do you think the project's about? And generally we got a picture of a bird <laughs> with a question mark. That tended to be about what they thought they were getting themselves into. Uh, and we followed that up at the end of the project as well, where thankfully that map got filled out a little bit better. There was a nice ecosystem obvious in their drawings. But basically the PD was all about giving the teachers the confidence to deliver the project. We understand not everybody is a bird nerd. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that they knew that they weren't going it alone, but gave them some basic skills in how to do a bird survey, how to use a pair of binoculars, um, and how to identify some birds. And then they went out and started delivering the resource. So the first school delivered was bird watching. Our favorite bird that we've seen at our school is the masked lapwing because our environment is safe for the juveniles. The favorite activity was watching the birds and counting them because we got to see all the different species attract the superb ferryman to our school by planting specific shops. Of the bird because they make the bird go away. So what we did was um, brought the students out to the Discovery Centre. We had our team of volunteers. We taught them how to use binoculars. We gave them a few activities to take part in to have a bit of a practice. And then we took them out to do a bird survey. And that forms the basis for the rest of the project. Once they did a bird survey with us at the discovery space, they were then able to do that on their school grounds. And that continued through the project. They also, of course, wanted to connect the bird watching with their school grounds. And so we needed to provide some lessons around habitat and how important what they've got in their space is for their local bird life. My favourite activity was when, when the birds in school project team came to our school and we learned all the insects that birds eat in our school. So they were doing some um, leaflet searches and things, they were looking at their school grounds and doing some mapping and looking at where their habitat was. Uh, we were doing some scavenger hunts and identifying where there was food available for birds, not just rubbish, but actual vegetation and things that, were, that were, the students were able to locate and identify as important habitat that was going to be influencing the birds that they got in their space. The next bit was they had to actually analyse their data. So we wanted the students to not only do their bird surveys but work out what that all meant, which meant <coughs> math lessons for them. Uh, there was some uh, some lessons around graphing, around calculating averages, and they were looking at there's different sites on their school grounds and working out what they saw. What we did was we had a video conference uh, for, the, for the students, that was our role. We asked them um, to come in as uh, the video conference with multiple schools. So there was us and then three other schools all communicating together and exchanging what they found on their school grounds and giving a presentation. So it was generally a presentation like today. The students standing up in front of the camera and talking about the introduction, the methods, the results, the conclusions that they found. But we had some students um, representing their findings with drawings and artwork. We had plays with costumes. Uh, there was some really unique ways that the schools uh, all came together to work out what they'd seen on their school grounds. And then, I guess the conservation outcome that we wanted for this project was to get an action plan in place and plants in the ground. So there was another video conference. Uh, this time it was with uh, myself uh, and our project officers uh, who were the experts again answering questions, talking to the students about what they were, what they were seeing, what they thought uh, their different bird life was telling them, and how they would go about implementing an action plan. They had an example to work with. They were looking at what they were going to 
going to do, who was going to do it, what it was going to cost, when it had to happen. And then they were going to produce those action plans and present them to us. We provided a few little videos that are still up on YouTube, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> it never goes away. Uh, that, that gave them some information about how to plant and how to uh, build nest boxes and things. Uh, and then the exciting thing, I guess, is the culmination of all the effort that the students have put in over the years, which is to get the plants in the ground. Uh, so we had funding to fund nine of the 16 schools that were involved in the program. Uh, we, we set dates, we worked with local councils and local suppliers of uh, locally made plants uh, to work out uh, the best locations for their gardens, uh, and other features that they were going to be putting into the school grounds. Uh, we tend to be held this off until the next year. So we started 2014. We were doing the planting in 2015 uh, to get over that Christmas break when there's no one around, of course, to look after plants that just go in the ground. Um, and so we went back and did our implementation. There were, of course, the downside issues when you're dealing with ibis and cross twos that love breaking and opening school bags so incredibly clever. Uh, so we looked at some uh, waste management issues, uh, making sure there were some bins with lids and things that can't be lifted by incredibly intelligent birds. And we did a whole heap of planting. So almost 4,000 plants went in the ground across nine schools. Uh, we revegged about 800 square metres of habitat. Uh, and then put in a few other features as well. So um, nest boxes are always something that people love to get up and installed. Um, can be quite challenging on school grounds to find a good spot for them. Um, but we did put some up in, in some of the schools. And they all love the bird bath aspect as well. So uh, again, something that requires a bit of maintenance. Um, but there were some uh, art activities around a lot of the schools actually designing and constructing their own bird bath to then put out. So it was a great example of um, the students learning about what they've seen analysing their data and making a change at the end of the project. So as I said, we did do some assessments and I'll just run you really quickly through some of the findings. Uh, we only worked with the teachers. As I said, we did that cognitive mapping exercise. We asked the teachers at the start what they thought they were getting involved in and they knew it was something about birds. At the end, they actually understood they were looking at their school as an ecosystem um, and their role within it as well as the bird's role within it. Some of the teachers also evaluated the students through their own methods. We didn't, and I'm kicking myself that we didn't, we probably will. Uh, and then we also uh, evaluated the teachers at the start and at the end of the um, project and at the, start, at, at the end of each module as well. So all of the schools, even if they didn't do action plans with us, did do something on school grounds to help birds. Uh, we saw that they increased uh, their ability to identify habitat loss as a major problem with affecting native birds. They increased their knowledge in identifying birds, which is fantastic. We saw them making more of an effort to try and conserve birds on their school grounds. And they were increasing their sustainability objectives on their school grounds as well. So we're using birds as that nice little bright coloured tool to get change happening, not only for bird life, but for the school and its sustainability plans. Uh, so that's a nice little quote of someone enjoying getting involved in the project. And just quickly, because... We'd like to see more red bottle birds in the school because we don't see them much and it would be a treat for us. And we also want to support, support birds because they, some are indigenous and some are extinct and we don't want that to happen because they are very important in our community. And that boy did not get a word in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I said, really quickly, um, next steps are to see where we, further we can take birds in schools. Um, Sydney was incredibly resource intensive. It required a significant amount of funding to get it under, underway. We want more, more students involved in birds in schools. We had a thousand, which is fantastic, but you know we were only in a very small area of Sydney. So at the moment, we're uh, working 
to launch a virtual school in North Queensland, uh, where we've reduced the content a little bit. It's quite challenging when you're trying to take them through all of these steps. But we've reduced the content a little bit, um, but we're still going to have that action plan and implementation at the end of it. And we're working with these three different packages now. So we've got what we used to call virtual schools light, but we're calling it the Tidal package because they're tiny and cute. Mm -hmm. So it's the freebie. It's something that schools will be able to download and use whenever they like. It's about learning the teachers getting the confidence to go and do a bird survey and then getting lessons in doing how to identify birds, doing the monitoring and entering the data to us because putting the data into us at BirdLife with bird data means that not only can they explore their own data, but it contributes to what we know about birds and so it's the students as their role as citizen scientists in a bigger picture as well. Then we're going to go to uh, the full package. This needs to have a price tag attached to it. I'm scared about attaching a price to it. I don't know how to do it yet. And then the whiz bang, we need grants for property package, uh, which is involved in putting those plants 